Welcome to Talking Beards, an entertainment news podcast all about the facial hair lifestyle and the people who use their beards and mustaches to help change the world. Join your hosts, World Goatee Champion Aaron D. Johnston and two-time National Goatee Champion Scott Sakura as they talk about all the important issues in the community from charity events, competition news, styling tips, breaking news, and much more. Tune in every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern as we stream live on all social media platforms as well as TalkingBeards.com and answer all of your questions. Join in our chat room and be a part of the show each week as we give away great prizes, compliments of Honest Amish. I am your host, Aaron D. Johnston, and I am Scott Sakura, and we are Talking Beards. Oh, hey, what's going on, everybody in Talking Beards world? This is episode number 161, and we're back. We missed last week, and this is going to be episode number 238 of the podcast. Tonight, we have Emily Diver. Uh, she is from Arizona, and she will be helping, or basically, she just did the whole thing. She she did the uh, Desert Beard Battle that's coming up this weekend in Glendale, Arizona on april 9th so we'll we'll learn everything that there is to learn about that event coming up here in the next uh, few minutes uh yeah like scott said earlier this is going to be a jam-packed episode about as jam-packed as jake johnson's butt wow (laughs) why is aaron blurry because i don't know because my computer decided to kick me into wi-fi so um, you look better now going on i don't know but you look better now I'm not on Wi-Fi anymore. I don't know. I'm plugged in. So, yeah, I'm Aaron D. Johnston, and uh, I was blurry a minute ago, but now I can see, be seen clearly. Uh, you were like blurry. Out. You were like blurry like someone was wearing glasses with jam filters on them. Like oh it was gosh. like they p- took jam and they put it on the lenses, and they're like, oh, that my gosh, me. everything's blurry. It was probably Jake Johnson's fault. Oh, hey, Matt McClear's here. Thought I had too many Miller lattes. <laughs> That's just, fancy for Miller Lite. I What's got, up, Scott? I got a text from Matt just a few minutes ago. Ooh, special, special delivery. I didn't, I didn't get a text from Matt. Wow, Whatever. thanks, Matt. You'll probably get one now. Okay. But uh, yeah, anyways, I'm uh, Scott Sakura. You can find out more information at Scott Sakura wherever, wherever Scott, Scott Sakura dot com, wherever Scott Sakura's are sold. Actually, I think that's a Scott Sakura dot com is a antique dealer out of Michigan. Really, it's it's a thing. Yeah, that's, there's a guy named Scott Sakura. He's an antique. Like, Sounds like a cool guy. He probably is. He probably is an antique. I tried to defriend request all the Scott Sakuras on Facebook just so I could get to know them all. <laughs> <laughs> Which ended up being a real big mistake because like, when I try to tag myself in a post, you got to look up through them. all the Scott Sakuras, and I'm like, well, gosh, which one is the right one? I struck up a friendship with uh, Aaron Johnston on Facebook one time. He was a car guy, and we talked for a, a, a while a few years ago. But I didn't Whoa. go through there and add them all. That was Did you see different. we have Dale Spratlin from the Spratlin Institute here tonight? Uh, He's like, never really been involved, but I intend to watch the whole show tonight. Good looking whiskers, guys. Well, thanks, Dale. I appreciate it. Yeah, stick around and... You know, hopefully it's it's a good episode for you. Oh, it should be yeah. pretty damn packed. Uh oh. Did you see my thing? Anthony Cardi brought it up. What? My card. Soft, Soft serve Aaron is the his house. Wow, you Man. can read real well, well. Oh, it's in the his house. I can't. I'm not good at yeah. reading. So, so uh well, yeah, let's get into this thing. What what did you do this weekend, Scott Sakor? Well, but before we get into oh, oh, we, what we did. I, I jumped out of line here. My bad. That's all right. It doesn't. I mean, we, I, we can talk about what I did this weekend and then we can talk yeah. about that. But all right. So first off, though, uh, if you guys are interested in learning more about us in the show, make sure you go over to talkingbeards.com. There you can find out more information about us. You can subscribe to the podcast. Uh, go over to our YouTube page if you like. Uh, there's a bunch of uh, bonus videos over there. We're starting to do some more stuff. Uh, breaking news, YouTube will be diving into the world of podcasting within the next couple of months, so be sure to keep your eyes peeled. On We're a podcast. We are a podcast, but there's going to be different content 
over on YouTube. So hmm. if you guys are enjoying anything that Talking Beards does, make sure you go over there and subscribe to us on YouTube because there's going to be lots of cool stuff coming up in the next couple months. So I, I meant to text you that today. Surprise. That was, that was the big breaking news over the weekend uh, that uh, pot, or YouTube just uh, announced uh, in the small podcasting circle about what they have plans for podcasts and how they're going to start doing stuff and blah, blah, blah. And him, ha, ha, ha. Anyways, talkingbeards.com. Uh, you can watch our show live. Currently we are live streaming on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Is that right? And Twitch and Twitch. Oh, we're on Twitch too tonight. So, uh, if you guys are, or if you want, you can watch us over at talkingbeards.com, but you cannot interact with the show. So you have to go either to Facebook and watch us at Talking Beards, or you have to go over to YouTube watching us at Talking Beards, or over at Twitch, or at Twitter, if you want to interact with the show in the chat room here. So, um, yeah. So that's what's going on right now. So other than that, this weekend, what did I do? I worked, um, and then when I got done with work, I, I went and got my taxes done, which... Ooh, that's dude, I was I was like, cool, because I, of course, I finished my year out in Ohio... I sold my house, um, other assorted garbage, blah, blah, blah. And I, then I basically moved to Texas at the beginning of the year. So all my tax stuff was all Ohio based. And lo and behold, I didn't realize that Texas doesn't even have uh, state tax, which is really cool. So, uh, but yeah, so I had to file all this stuff. The next thing I know, it was Ray. like, Jeff, hey, Jeff Ray, I was just going to talk about you. That's how weird. It's like Chris he knew. Wilson. My gosh, Christ, my, we got, we got lots of people here. All tonight. the greats, all the great of all greats. Um, but actually my weekend did start off with something really amazing. It started off with a two hour long conversation with Aaron D Johnston. On it Friday. was a two hour long conversation. It was, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. And that leads into the things that are going to be coming up for us. Aaron and I got a really awesome project that uh, we are going to start working on. And we think that everyone is going to absolutely love it. And we really I think know everyone's going to yeah. love it. We just got to do it. That's all. Yeah, it, it'll happen. There's, there's no fans or butts about it, but Jeez. I think it'll really help with the beard community and, you know, getting more people interested and in learning more about the history of it. So, um, just make sure you guys stay tuned. Make sure, like I said, make sure you guys go over and subscribe wherever, like on YouTube or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, wherever. Just you know, consume us wherever you can. What's up, Gary um, Bow and Arrow? Yeah. So, anyways, to get back to what I was saying, so after I did my taxes, I uh, had uh, oh, hey. decided that maybe I would uh, venture into town to this really cool place called the, the Cigar, Cigar Vault. Vault. Yeah. Um, that's Jeff Ray's house. That's like, yeah, it's like Jeff Ray's house. And like he walks in there and, there and he's like, cheers. They're like, he's Jeff. like, the, like yeah, that. he is. It's, like, he's like the tour. mayor of the cigar mm -hmm. vault. Yeah, you could tell. Everybody knows that. Yeah. So got his picture up on the wall and everything. Yeah. So Jeff and Lisa were there. And then I didn't even know this, but then all of a sudden the chicken breads were there. I was like, oh my gosh. They live there too. They, well, they live about an hour away. <laughs> so I got to in Texas terms. Yeah, any, everyone like in Texas, they all like live down the street from each other. But, uh, mm -hmm. what, well, um, anyways, uh, so I got to spend uh, a few hours with them on Saturday, which was really cool. Oh my gosh, Eric Nykirk is here. What's up, Eric? I think he's in the NASCAR thing with me. With no, the, the mob NASCAR thing. I think he's like in oh, third cool. or fourth place right now. Yeah. Good so, job, Eric. But yeah, so that, that was the extent of my weekend. Um, Sunday, we just went to a family function over at Angela's family's house. It was fun. It was awesome. It was like, I've been kind of having like, uh, over the past like few weeks, I've been kind of having like missing home a lot mm -hmm. and missing family, home cooked meals, all this stuff. And, you know, we went to this little family get together and it was nice to like feel like, it, I, you know, you know, just yeah, sometimes it, yeah. it's just some homey stuff. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, home cooked food. I got to eat burgers and hot dogs. Like, nice. I know that's a that's amazing. Yeah. So that was my weekend, Aaron. And 
I what's going to be going on for like the next I don't know 40 minutes of you talking about your weekend because this <laughs> this was the first part of our conversation on on Friday was all about what happened with uh Steven El Dorado how's what's it up, going Steven? my Texas brother <clears throat> um he's right up the road yeah he's right up the road um yeah so Aaron begin so, so i'm gonna kick this off with yeah. saying if you're commenting on my page or anything and you want to interact with the show go over to the talking beards facebook page or youtube page because i know for sure those work and i i see there's some comments popping up on aaron d johnson page yeah anyway you can also be watching us live on the Honest Amish Facebook page as well as Beard Team USA's Facebook yeah, page. Yeah, I mean, we're everywhere, but I know for a fact the, the Talking Beards Facebook page works if you want to interact with the show. Now, if you just want to watch it and you're already watching it and you're somewhere else, go for it. Keep staying there. But if you want to comment, I know those places work. So with that being said, my gosh, what a freaking couple of weeks I had. Let's just go all the way back. So... The Monday before we were supposed to go do Talking Beards on Tuesday last week, I woke up Monday at like 4 o'clock in the morning, and I I honestly don't know if I've ever been this sick. Are you being I, honest? I'm extremely honest right now. I woke up. I was in a puddle of sweat. I had like 102.5 degree temperature. I thought I was dying. I was in a super nice room in Las Vegas. We had all these plans and you know, me, Natalie and Andrew were going to go do all the things. I did none of the things. I couldn't even look at my phone. Like I could text barely. And then when I looked at my phone, I felt like I was going to throw up. I don't. So I just laid there. Like I couldn't look at my phone. I couldn't watch TV. I couldn't look at a computer, nothing. Like I don't like, I don't know. It was bad. So that's why we didn't have a show last week. I woke <laughs> up. To- I love that. He watches every week except for the weeks we're not on. Yeah, right. Me too. Way to go. Thank you, David Brown. And I woke up Tuesday and I was definitely feeling better. Not perfect, but, you know, we got out and did some stuff and we went to uh, Caesars and checked out that stuff. The and salad we, place? Yeah, we, we ate all the salad. So uh, wow. we, we cruised around, went to a few casinos and walked in. We were, just, we're not, we're not gambling. We're going to casinos that like they have things going on like water shows or giant singing frogs or, you know, That's malls like sex and stuff thing, like that. Aaron. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, well, we can go back further. Apparently I need to talk about the Pahrump competition as well. Because, oh yeah. That was the reason why you were there. Yeah. That was the reason I was actually out there, but I, I didn't go back far enough. What's up, David Organo? Should we play uh, the, uh, there's a video that goes along with the Pahrump thing. Maybe we can get to that later. Okay. Yeah. So we got a lot to cover. So yeah. Yeah. Pahrump comp was super cool. There was a chili cook off. There was ax throwing. There <laughs> was people everywhere. There was uh mascots for the minor league team were there. Very good competition. Patrick Dawson and company did a very good job and it'll be in Las Vegas next year. So everybody keep that, keep that in mind. If you want to go to Vegas, actual vegas not perump uh this is going to be a hell of event i promise they, you they said got... perump is like an hour so perump is an Los hour Angeles. outside of vegas and there's literally nothing and i and i mean this wholeheartedly there's nothing between perump and las vegas except for like oxygen oxygen and sand that's it Nothing else. Um, so you just drove in the sand. There was not even roads. Yeah, you had to. It's it's you know you're out in the desert, so you just dune buggy. Mm. Oh hey, Crystal Davis is here. Drink everyone. <laughs> so then, uh, so yeah, we did Vegas stuff Wednesday and then or Tuesday and then Wednesday we woke up early and proceeded to drive three thousand miles in thirty hours. So. We got about two hours outside of Vegas, and Natalie and I are just cruising on two-lane interstate. Not bumper-to-bumper traffic, but a decent amount of traffic. Um, Two semis swapped over in front of me. I'm in the fast lane, so I'll set this up for you. I'm in the fast lane. There's a semi in front of me, and then the semi gets over at the same time that a semi is coming from the slow lane into the fast lane. So there's a gap briefly so I could see down the road. Well, when I could see down the road, it looked like in the distance that there was a front end of the car. And I was like, probably not. There, that must have just been a weird back of a car. And, and that's what I call a sticky situation. 
Almost. Oh, oh not yet. That's and Kara's here. She has a broken foot. Broken foot. Oh my gosh. What's up, Inkira? I hope you're doing all right. We hope you're doing good. So um I'm following the semi and then not two seconds later, the semi goes from the fast lane to the slow lane as hard as he possibly humanly possible could. I don't know how he did not flip over. And there it was the front end of a Honda Accord coming at us about a hundred miles an hour. I got over in the slow lane and sure enough, you ever car in our lane. Have you ever driven in the slow lane before? Was that your first time? Sometimes it was the first time in a while, but I got over there. Um, but dude, this car, like the front bumper was hanging off. The uh, inner fender was dragging the ground. The whole driver's side was smashed in. The, the, the side view mirror was dangling. And it was a new, like a pretty new Accord. And I'm telling you, he was doing 95, 100 miles an hour. He the was ashtray flying. was open. Yeah. And I looked at my, l- watched him in my rear view mirror and he disappeared. I didn't see any cars, you know, crashing or anything. We got maybe, maybe an maybe a mile up the road and it was just complete carnage. There was probably a dozen cars. There was a car flipped over. There was a Chrome plated Tesla crashed into the uh, flipped over car. There was cars on both sides of the road with clear amount of damage. It was wild. Absolutely wild. So uh, we continued down our path. No more excitement to that level. Uh, We got out, out of Albuquerque and probably, I don't know, 30 minutes outside of Albuquerque, we stop at a gas station. It's starting to get dark, but not not dark yet. And then, so we get gas, and I go to turn on the car, and it doesn't start. Oh, man. So the battery turned over about once, and we got that click. So I had jumper cables. I popped the hood. There was a truck over there. Dude jumped me off. We went to uh, Taco Bell, sat in the drive through and I was like, all right, you know, we're, we're in this drive through We'll, we'll Google auto parts stores or whatever, go get a new battery, get back on the road, some tacos. Yeah. Some tacos will be good to go. There was nothing open in this town. Um, at all, nothing except so, Taco Bell. Taco Bell was open, but you can't get a car battery there. Just gas. Uh, so then we started looking at, you know, the closest Walmart and whatnot. Yeah. I it heard does it. sound dirty. I heard it. I heard it, Matt. Um, so, so I was like, all right, so we can either backtrack completely go off the path or we can go to, uh, Amarillo, Texas. That is three hours away and get a battery. So I'm like, all right, well it's, it's three hours away at seven o'clock. Uh, Walmart closes at 11. Amarillo we'll by morning. Amarillo by morning. And then, so we start driving and then I looked, and I was like, well, maybe there's a auto parts store open that late. Probably not, but maybe. And I start scrolling through all the auto parts stores, and lo and behold, there's an, an auto zone open till 11 o'clock at night for some Did reason. you get in the zone, Aaron? I did get into the zone. Wow. So uh, so I call them, like, hey, you know, are y'all really open till 11? They're like, yep, oh, really open till 11. I'm like, all right. And then, uh, do you have a battery for Forrester? Yep, good to go. I'm like, all right, well, we'll be there in three hours. No problem. So I put it in my GPS. Keep in mind, it was 7 o'clock a little bit ago, and... Uh, so I put it in the GPS. It said like 1101 or something like that. So that means we were going from mountain time to central time. Oh, my gosh. <sighs> you didn't account for that. I did not think about that. So now we just proceed to haul ass to take some time off the GPS. And so now that just, stands for global positioning satellite. That's something. <clears throat> um. So, yeah. So then Natalie just takes a nap because you know we're we're rolling down the interstate a fur piece and uh yeah so we're we're rolling a little bit and then we hit a storm so then it starts raining on us and there's tumbleweeds flying and we started you know we're just driving and it was super storming like super storming and then we hit some hail and that was pretty fun because it was a a good bit of hail and then the the uh, temperature gauge goes from the 40s down to like 32, and then it starts snowing on us. Oh Pretty my gosh! Super heavy snow for a little bit, and so I'm still doing my best to keep it at least at the at the speed limit, so I'm not gaining time. I'm at least staying steady, and uh, so we get oh you know through the storm, and so I, I continue to start hauling ass again, and then we get to Amarillo. And by morning. By morning. 
and we rolled up to the auto zone at like 1042. I come flying into the parking lot. I run into the auto zone and they're like, Subaru battery. I was like, yes. <laughs> and so I proceeded to in- install the battery. Dude come out, uh, lend a hand, swap the batteries out. Thank the guys. Went across the street, got gas, got back on the road. And we still took time off the GPS to the house. So I felt like that was, that was pretty successful doing a whole battery swap, getting gas, getting off the beaten path, getting back on the path. And we still, you know, we still ended up taking 20, 30 minutes off and poor Natalie has to stop every two hours to pee. And we didn't do that. So she was extremely excited to, uh, get home. We can't read what's on your little sticky thing. Damn it. <laughs> My old joke failed. Yeah, I figured it was that. But yeah, so that was our our event to uh to the house. So then we just proceeded to to you know, drive home. There there was nothing else exciting, but somehow I ended up staying up like 40 hours. I don't understand what I was doing. I wasn't really tired. Uh, Natalie drove for about two hours between Memphis and uh, Birmingham, Alabama, and I dozed off for 30, 45 minutes or so in that time. And then we, she drove us to Bucky's, so that was pretty good. So we, we got gas at Bucky's and you know, walked around for a moment, and then we got back on the road. We got home at, I don't know, 5 o'clock-ish Thursday night, and unpacked did all of our house stuff went to bed and then woke up friday did stuff i don't even know what all we did i know we had a thousand things on the list but that's irrelevant right now wow and good, uh good story peewee i hope you find your bike yeah right and then uh after that i drove to richmond so i drove to richmond to the uh richmond international raceway or whatever it is up there and you know I got to go see this bad boy oh my gosh. in person. My gosh, such a beautiful car. I want to say that Bassett Racing, that whole group of people is absolutely amazing. I'm sure none of them is even going to watch the show, but dude, I've no, I've followed NASCAR since I was five years old, and this whole experience was absolutely a dream come true. I, I got to go anywhere and everywhere I wanted to within the track. and to the bathroom? I did. I I did absolutely tore that thing up and uh wow it was amazing. Is the NASCAR uh, bathroom different than a regular bathroom? Yeah, it's faster. You gotta go pee as fast as you can. You gotta, fast as you can. So you know I, I get there get there super early and I meet Chad Roberts and uh, me and Chad get a get in the in the track and we wander around and do track stuff and it was it was super fun. Uh, you guys did was, like long jump and pole vault? Yeah. Wow. All of it. So it was super cold. So Natalie definitely made a solid decision to not come. Uh, I think it was about 37 degrees ish, but it was, it was a chilly 37. I know Matt McClear, I, I said something about it being cold at 37. And he laughed at me, but you know, we were just in Vegas two days prior and it was 95 degrees. So, you know, that's a heck of a change. So we get there and uh, practice goes really well. We were about 16th in practice. And we needed to be 32nd <laughs> in qualifying. So the, those numbers were looking very, very much our, on our side. Uh, Dylan goes out for practice or uh, for qualifying on sticker tires, which were cold. And with it being that cold, it was really important to scrub the tires and try to get some heat into them. And he just he got too aggressive. And that's that's what happened. So he he was scrubbing the tires, you know cranking the car back and forth and you know that's going to naturally put some heat in them and just a 37 degree track cold tires just didn't mix and he spun the car around and and bumped the inside wall and uh that pretty much ended our day he backed up and still put down a, a good qualifying lap but it was a second off the pole and as close as these cars are that's just not going to get you where you need to be so we ended up qualifying 40th out of 42 cars and you know, the way the field was looking with provisionals and where we were in the owner's points, we needed to be at least 32nd. And, you know, with, like I said, with our practice times, we were good, but it just, it didn't work out for us. So unfortunately we didn't make the race in Richmond and it was extremely depressing, especially, you know, from a team standpoint. And I've, I've never really got to 
watch that before, you know, like you don't, you don't think about the perspective of a small team. Like they don't make the the race. I got to see what they go through. You know what I mean? Like how they feel, what they have to go through. Like they're still there. They can't leave. They got to wait for the race to be over before they can get their hauler out of the track and stuff. So they're there. And, uh, the, we sat there and it was, it was, it was sad, dude. It was super sad. Like the, the, they worked really hard to get there. Those boys, they, they work on that car. It, none of the other drivers in the entire field in any series, pretty much none of the top series work on their car. And, and Dylan and Ronnie Jr., they work on that car 24 seven at their house. Like that is their car. And they go through tech and they push that car through tech and they work on it. And they're the mechanics. And dude, it's, it's so awesome seeing the whole thing. Like, this is an amazing group. I'm super lucky to be involved with them. And, uh, yeah, they, unfortunately, you know, they, they had to load up the car early and it got loaded and they made burgers and made the best of the day. And we wandered around and we all walked to the pit road and watched driver intros and did the, you know, national anthem and did the whole thing as a team. And we found us a spot and we kind of posted up and watched the race together. And, you know, I, wandered around a little bit once once the race really started going and i was like all right i'm gonna go be a race fan for a little bit so i wandered off and i you know i found a a joe gibbs pit crew or you know pit box and i kind of hung out behind them and on the bgs no oh the race team different gibbs so so joe gibbs racing is is the team that i've i've followed for several several years and Joe Gibbs was up on the pit box and he's the owner of the team. He was also the coach of the Redskins at one point in time. And he's also a client. And he's also a client. And his 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 grandson, you know, is, is watching the team or is driving. So, you know, he was sitting on his pit box anyway. So I went down there and checked that out for a while and then went back down there and finished the race with the team. And we continued on and we went ahead and went home. But luckily um, they're going to keep the car wrapped and, and we're going to try it again. But unfortunately I won't be able to be there cause I'll be with, you know, not necessarily, unfortunately, but I can't be in two places at once. Where's so. the next race at? It's, it's going to be in Martinsville, Virginia. Oh my gosh. So. It's like right down the street. Oh, oh, so I, this thing. I forgot about that. So me and Chad, me and Chad is our VIP pass thing and a bunch of little picture deals. But, um, yeah, so the car is still going to be wrapped. They're they're redoing the front where Dylan tapped the inside wall. It wasn't bad, but yeah, it's going to be racing in Richmond, Virginia this weekend, the Xfinity Series on Friday night. So, you know, if you, you want to watch the Honest Amish car, give it a shot again. Friday night, Martinsville, uh, Dylan won't be in the car, but Ronnie Bassett Jr. will be in the car. He's a little bit older. He's got a little bit more experience, so... We just got to make the feel. We're going for thirty second, and then, then hopefully the, the car gets its day in the day in the spotlight like it should because it's a it's a good looking car. But that was that was pretty much it. And now we're we're back here, and Natalie yeah. and I are going to leave first thing in the morning to go to Arizona. So and, we have a bunch of people in the chat room uh, that are joining us now. We got Monty, Joe, Elo, John's here. What's up, uh, everybody? Everyone, we got Jeff's here, Felix. It's here and Kara's also here, like we already know. But yeah, if you guys are uh, watching the show, make sure you pop in the chat um, and get something up there so we can uh, see that you're here, know you're watching the show because we got some really exciting information that's about ready to come up here. And it's not about Jake's butt. It's not, but it's about to be about Jake's butt. It's so going. breaking news. Breaking news. We we have we have Emily. So here we go. So <laughs> I forgot to put her banner for her comp in here. Dad gum it. Anyway, so we'll just go with this. So live from uh Glendale, Arizona adjacent area, you know, out there somewhere. We have from the uh desert beard battle, we have Emily Diver in the house. What's up, Emily? Oh my gosh, she's muted. This did not work. You're muted, Emily. Oh my gosh, oh, Emily. Here I am. This oh, is hey. really how we want to start this. Really. There we go. <laughs> how are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing excellent. Sorry we kept you waiting for 10 minutes, but Scott said we'd be done at 820. So uh, you know, I, I told you 820, but you know. That's okay. That's all right. So how are you? Are you you're good? It's hot here. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. It's gonna be 97 degrees on Saturday. Yes, but yeah. 
But the event. Speaking of butts, but go ahead. (laughs) (laughs) Speaking of butts. (laughs) What on earth is that? I feel it. Um. But the venue has really nice covering, so we're actually going to get a nice breeze in the afternoon going. So it should be pretty pleasant. Oh my gosh. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. So, uh, you know, are, are you, you good and ready for this thing? You, you have any loose ends Getting you need there. to tie up? We're, we're still finishing the awards, the steer heads that we have. My mom, who is a local artist, she's been working on them for six months, almost every day. And so she's got one more special steer head that she's working on that she's going to be finishing up this week. Well, we weren't re- necessarily going to start there, but I mean, you've already brought it up. Can you, can you show yeah. one of these steer heads off? Oh my. Holy crap. These might be the most extravagant trophies ever for a beard comp. So that's the veteran one. What the hell? This one was actually hand painted by me. Yes. Whoa. This is the veteran beard first This place? is the veteran's beard champion steerhead. So since we're starting with this, each um, each Category. first place winner will get one of these steerheads that um, my mom, who, like I said, was a local artist, she designed, she custom created each one. So each each person that wins first place in each category will get one of these as a winner. These are beautiful. Yeah. The veterans. Wow. Oh, is she going to show us another one? I think she is. It's, it's, um, I like how you said your mom was an artist as, as in like, past. She she definitely, she's definitely still is an artist. I'm pretty she, sure she is. Yeah. She, yeah. uh, she had a stroke a few years ago, so it takes her a little bit longer, but she definitely likes doing this. It's therapy for her. Oh my Lord. So Dude. this is, this is the Whiskerina winner. One of them. One of them. I think this is the creative, actually. These are amazing. So in the center here, we're actually going to be putting Desert Beer Battle 2022, Steve Glendale, Rose. Arizona, and the just uh, champion on there. Wow. Steve Arizona. Dude, that is super cool. What did uh, So what's second and third going to get? Um. Well, we each... A handshake, yeah. We, we we did everything for first place. I don't know what to say for second and third. Each category was sponsored by a company that okay. uh, they're going to get a nice little prize and a ribbon for second cool. and third. So, um, so so it's really just like a battle for first place. That's just really. You know, <laughs> Here's another second one. Second place is just the first loser. So each one's super different. I think this one is full beard styled stash, dude. This, I mean, these things are insane. Like, I feel like booking a flight right now. Go well, for it. You know, they say everything's bigger in Texas, right? But in Arizona, we just go all out here. There you <laughs> go. I guess. I mean, because you have to try to make it up to Texas. <laughs> yeah, these are definitely some of the coolest trophies I've ever seen. I, I I'll definitely, I'll agree with Carrie on that one. Oh, my gosh. Like and you, this by far, you have like started off the interview like crazy. Like sorry, <laughs> oh no, <laughs> no, that's good. <laughs> like I knew you were doing those, but that that crap's amazing. Good and for we, you. These are cool, and we appreciate the fact that you're. I mean, sometimes with these competitions, like the people who are doing the trophies, they like to kind of keep it on the down low so people don't know. Like I yeah, think it's a that special is the- thing. Probably the stupidest thing any competition could ever do. You have to show if you've got cool trophies, show them off. Give people a reason to come to your event, and this is a reason people would come just to get those those cool trophies. And well, yeah, all along about any event, like I, you know, I I appreciate it about you matter. Like show off those buckles, like make cool trophies, show them off. People will come for those trophies. I don't know if you want me to get in the best in show yet. I mean, that one I would pull off on. I wouldn't. Show if you that. want to show it off, show it off. That's your call. It's your event. So, you know show it off. One of our oldest towns in the state of Arizona, Tombstone, donated oh, a. They make pizzas there. They do. <laughs> well, they donated a piece of art um, for a our pizza. best in show, and it is a. It's actually a. 
a bronze sculpture of pizza. Right here. Holy. Oh my god. <laughs> my Tatanka. Yeah, pretty much. This was done by a local artist in Tombstone. And um they said they wanted to be a part of it and they uh it's really super heavy. <laughs> <laughs> My arms are like slowly going down. You should have had that muscle man lift it for you. Like he'd be like, excuse <laughs> me, I'll show this. <laughs> He's like this, I'll show this. <laughs> That's right. <sighs> so a little bit of backstory about Jake Johnson. We, <laughs> I wish we would have been recording our pre-show. So we always meet a little bit before the show and just to make sure audio's working right, you know, just to BS a little bit. And then Emily's mom just busts out and be like talking about grabbing Jake Johnson's butt and seeing him naked. I'm like, what the heck naked. is going on here? She's like, don't mind me. I've been drinking wine. Yeah, don't mind <laughs> me. But, you know, I've seen Jake Johnson naked. He don't know it. Like, well, he knows it now. <laughs> Your mom is awesome. We're talking about you seeing me naked. J- Jake's hiding behind his hat. My mom's like, what are they saying? What? I didn't say that. The best part about this is the fact that you have it in your ear and they can't hear everything we're saying. (laughs) Oh, yeah. You're in the. Oh, yeah. That's even better. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you, it's it's one thing after another over here. It's a wild. Sounds like a fun place to be. So So, let's let's get back into a little more details about this event. So, Aaron, uh, do you have specific? I know you you have the questions. Yeah, I just just the basic stuff like we always go through. So, uh, you you want to go through and uh, tell us a little bit about your judges you're going to have for this event? Yeah, we have some pretty amazing judges. Of course, we have Jake Johnson. Never heard of him. Tight butt Johnson. <laughs> Bare lip, tight bottom Johnson. Jake, Jake the tight end Johnson. I can't say any of the other judges after that. <laughs> <laughs> he just walked off. So, so are you going to make like name tags for the judges? It should just have. You should definitely have. I, a I think I'm going to change Jake's. I think yeah, I'm going to change it. He's the tight end now. <laughs> he's the tight end, yeah. Um, and then we have Steve Foz not coming. Okay. Uh, from the Bearded Villains. Cool. Um, we have Eric Brooks. He's going to be coming and judging. Ooh, um, that's a good yeah. one. Yeah. Amarta Forsman. <gasps> Sweet. And of course, Beard Mob's own Monty is going to be there. Not only do you have the best trophies I think I've ever seen, but you have compiled probably the best panel of judges. It It's such a shame that the MCs are probably like the low ball thing you guys have going on for the whole weekend but i mean it's it's really a shame that you got such a a great panel of judges and your mcs are just gonna be like like, garbage you know i will (laughs) i will have to say i've been working on this comp for since the last one that i did last two years (laughs) i've been working on this for a year actually and I started putting it out there. And you know what? Natalie was the first one to reach out. And I'm telling you, the planning exploded once she got a part of it. And I cannot. And that's thank what she her said. <laughs> so, <laughs> what did he say? I think you, you made Emily fall asleep, Scott. <laughs> she was tired. She's so sleepy. All right, so so what's Natalie got to do with this whole event? Well, why why did you bring Natalie up? Well, because she actually, <clears throat> she literally got. I was lost, uh, actually, honestly, when I first started my the one that I put on last year. It was kind of pieces and parts to put together, and I reached out um, on the Facebook world, and Natalie private messaged me, and it was like seriously got the ball rolling for all this planning getting you guys involved, getting Beard Mob involved, and just seriously getting these amazing panel of judges. And it's it's just all coming together. And seriously, I can't thank her enough. She's like, she's been a godsend, honestly. She loves you, Natalie. She's you, I do. Real, that, Natalie. She is just <sighs> bawling right now. <laughs> Gosh, way to go, make Natalie cry. Yeah, thanks, Emily. Way to go. <laughs> 
All right. So. Let's talk. Let's talk a little bit about. Uh, so w- the event is this weekend. Let's talk about the venue where it's at. Let's. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> uh, so hijack this. So it's on Saturday, um, and it's at Desert Rose Gastro Pub and Pizzeria, which is now called the Horny Toad. Ooh. The Horny Toad is actually a staple of Cave Creek. Um, it's it's a it's one of the probably one of the oldest bars in the phoenix valley um they did our event last year and they're like we want you to do it again this year it's a great place they've got outdoor games for adults like uh, adult size jenga nascar they do put they do have nascar on the screens good Um, because i'm gonna have to watch the race saturday while you know we're there oh yeah they (laughs) have uh they have air hockey they have like music um Great place right in historic Glendale. Um, so it's going to start at four, four to probably about nine. We've got about 12 vendors right now. Everything from handmade jewelry oh, wow. to candles to um, they have some, we have a couple of bakeries coming. Um, so it's, it's going to be a, a really great time. The venue is amazing. Like I said, it's a, it's going to be outdoors. And even though it's going to be hot, um, of course, after the sun goes down here in the desert, it gets pretty, it gets really nice and cool. Uh, so it'll, it's a, it's a good, perfect place. I think no humidity. Sean Glander wants to know if there's cornhole or not. They do have cornhole boards. Actually, there you go, Sean Glander. See, you should just come. Yeah. Sean Glander. You should just come. Yeah. yeah Sean Glander. You should just come. Yeah. Sean Glander. That's it. She's wow. <laughs> What'd your mother will you, say? Well, your mom be there. She just said that's what she said. Your mom's gonna be at the event, oh, wow. right? Wow. Yes. Woo-hoo. Sorry. She... Excellent. Maybe your mom should MC the event. Yeah, right. <laughs> no. Speaking of MCs, who are the MCs? Well, we, we have talk about that. We have the infamous Aaron D. Johnston and that's the me. beautiful and the beautiful Natalie Johnston. We have co MCs. So I'm super excited about that. And your mom too. The three of them were doing and your it. Mom's the third MC no. now. No. Yes. Why not? <laughs> well, I'm I'm extremely looking forward to MCing this thing with Natalie. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, it's um it's great. It's uh we haven't talked about it yet, but it is a charity event mm-hmm. for the Diving Devil Dogs of Arizona. They're a local group here. They're um, a group of Marines that teach veterans how to scuba dive. Ooh, raw. And um, they, uh, they, they help uh, veterans with PTSD and suicidal tendencies. And they, they teach them how to scuba dive so they can um, kind of feel that adrenaline again and kind of take their minds off things that maybe is making them go a little bit south. They are... So it was co-founded by two men, uh, two Marines, Javier Rosa and Ray Bennett II. Um, They do amazing things here in the Valley. They never ask for help. They are always helping. And that's one thing that I want to do is just kind of help them. I actually met them last year at a Bearded Villains event. I asked them if they wouldn't mind donating for the children, Phoenix Children's Hospital. And they said, yep. They, they had, there was no, they didn't even hesitate in saying yes. And so I want to try and give back to them. They right now have seven veterans that they want to get certified. And unfortunately right now they don't have the money to do that. So my goal is at least to help those seven veterans get certified. Did they give you any indication on what it costs to get one of them certified to do this? Um, I, I think they said it was, I think they said it was 1400 a person maybe is what they said. Um, but this is, you know, this is, this is what they do. They're going to have their boat out there and, um, they're going to, the gonna, middle of the desert. Yeah. That's- we actually, they teach our veterans, um, at a place it's pretty close. It's probably about 15 miles from here. It's Lake Pleasant in Peoria, Arizona, we have a nice man-made uh, lake out here, and that's where they teach them how to dive. And that video that you'd shown on YouTube is actually 
um, the the commercial they filmed there at Lake Pleasant, and um, they uh, they do a lot of their training there. Tell them about your bonus dad that's a Marine. So Emily's bonus dad is a Marine. He's actually in the hospital right now having his two out of three surgeries this week uh, on his back. Mm. He's Marine Corps of Vietnam. Oh, wow. And uh, he would love to be there, but he will be in the hospital. We should just so, take the party to him. Yeah, we'll just go there. Oh my God, he would just love it. The whole event to the the hospital. It'll oh, be- so the pre party is at the hospital on Friday <laughs> night. <laughs> we're yeah, we're gonna do a bar crawl right through ICU. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. They'll Whatever you gotta party. do. <laughs> so speaking of Friday night, do you have anything set up for Friday night? Yeah, we actually do. So um, NCG Hotels, which is the management company for Hilton. They gave us some amazing deals on our hotels, and they're actually sponsoring our judges. So they um, they were amazing, and they actually gave all of our judges free rooms oh, for wow. the weekend, as well of our as well as our MCs. So we are very gracious for them. They are in an area called the uh, Westgate Entertainment District, and it's got bars, it's got entertainment, it's got live music. It's actually where our Arizona Coyotes play. Um, it's within walking distance of that. So we're actually doing what we're calling, uh, what do we call it? Beard battle bingo. And so what we did is just to kind of get people to have some fun. We came up with these bar crawl bingo cards and, um, there's five different cards and it's just things that you kind of have to do and find. So, and it's your proof is pictures. So like, this one, I was really super tired, so you I came up with a baby, a, a, a baby in a bar. You have to in a bar. Find a beard baby in a bar. Well, I mean, I don't know if it's going to be bearded, but you can find a baby in a bar. Uh, Jake loves this one. Old, old lady, lady cleavage. cleavage. Jake loves old lady cleavage. <laughs> I remember him telling um, me about that. Which goes along with me touching his butt while he's sleeping. Uh huh. <laughs> Oh, so now it's when he was sleeping. Oh, he was the story sleeping. unfolds more. <laughs> so you remember wow. that time I was going to stay the night at your house, Emily? <laughs> I don't think, I'm I don't really think... looking forward to it now. <laughs> <laughs> so back to the cards. Oh, okay. okay. Back to the cards. But the most important one is each card has raised $20 from a stranger. And so I'm hoping that we can raise some money for the diving devil dogs, even at this event. So on the back are stickers and you put the stickers on the card and the first one to get to bingo wins a gift card. $10,000. Wow. That's very nice. How much? (laughs) (laughs) $10,000. Well, you know what? I really appreciate you donating that (laughs) for the bingo. (laughs) Wow. Ten thousand kind of dollars. Are, are we, wow. we Thanks chat, for we that, you guys. For. I'm sorry. What kind of gift card are we battling for? On. So the first one is going to be. What did we decide was the first gift card? Uh, for the bingo. Twenty five dollar gift card to a local um, establishment in Westgate. It's called Salt. It's a pretty. It's a. It's a fun place. Excellent margaritas. And then. Um, the a second part is dollar gift certificate to peppers. <laughs> yeah, no salt, salt. The salt second one was the peppers. Yeah, second exactly. One was the peppers. So the second one is if you get a blackout, not if you blackout, Ooh. but if you get a blackout, <laughs> you win a fifty dollar gift card. Wow. So, I think the main thing is just hanging out and having some fun. Um, one of the places we're going to go to is called Fine Ash. Fine Ash Cigars. They're a pretty cool bar and cigar place. Um, uh, they have they they have some nice nice cigars. Drinks and Scott cigars. Is a, yeah. is a cigar aficionado now. God. They um, they're actually that. known in the valley for their cigars. So um, we're going to be heading to that place, but. It's uh, each card is going to be five dollars. Again, everything that we're doing, we're trying to go toward the charity. Yeah, absolutely. So, this is awesome. This is a super, super cool idea. I love it. 
Yeah. Good job. Everything that you've everything that you've put together and planned for this has been extremely meticulously thought out and has like I mean everything is perfect. Yeah. Good job. You you've done Thanks. a wonderful job. I mean, and let's just hope that you have the most wonderful weekend for this and the weather's good and that you know everything goes off great and 10,000 people show up to this thing and Gosh, that would be the best beard competition ever. Yeah, I'm hoping I'm hoping for a great turnout. We have not only a bike week here this week. Oh. Um, we, we also have a huge country festival here called Country Thunder. So we'll also have the beard competition. We're hoping to have a nice turnout. Um, we're also going to have raffle prizes there and a 50-50 raffle. So there'll be some thing, other things going on. Um, it should be should be a great event. This is awesome. Yeah, I'm super, I'm super passionate about my veterans and my first responders, especially their health, mm-hmm. mental and physical. I'm always trying to help them. Yeah. Um, I just don't think that in general men's health is um, brought to light very much, especially veterans and first responders' mental health. Well, um, I, it's just never talked about enough. Uh, well, yeah, in in the in the public world, it's not talked about enough, but in the bearding community, it seems to be like one of the most major and most, I mean, in each community, it's a different group of people, but it's always usually veteran uh, focused or, but it's all about, you know, their, their mental stability and, you know, trying to help them through difficult times, you know, or if they have them or, you know, the PTSD and all that stuff with the veterans who've come back from you know, war, war, war zones, you know, and having a hard time adjusting to being a civilian again. But yeah, definitely it's not worldwide or nationwide a huge thing that people like really pay attention to or know about. And that's, like I said, that's like one of the cool things about the bearding community is they do put a, a humongous light upon it. And they really do, at least what we see in people who watch the show is all these different competitions that are going on all over the country, they're, they're getting little glimpses of, wow, you know, it's here, it's here, it's here. And they're understanding that, yeah, it is a bigger problem than, you know, people understand. And we appreciate the fact that, you know, you're taking the time to, you know, do this for that cause. And we wish you the absolute best with this. I mean, I do. I mean, it's, it, this is great. Thank you. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, you're, you've done a, an amazing job putting this whole thing together, and I'm really looking forward to being out there and just being involved with it and, and melting in the 97 degree heat. But it'll be fine. <laughs> I'll, it's I'll a dry you, heat. Yeah, it's I'll tell you what, we, it's fine. We had about 97 here. We just went swimming for the first time today, like right before the show, and but yeah, it's it's hot. Well, we have a little kiddie pool out in our backyard. So, Aaron, you when cats? you guys come, kid, kiddie pool. Yeah, I like cats. We'll we'll fill it up and we'll make sure that we have that ready for you. You're gonna fill it up with cats? I, I love <laughs> getting in the pool with cat. This sounds great. Wow. Hopefully, put well, the cats on ice first. Welcome to the funny farm. <laughs> well, Emily, thank you for everything. I know we could have just kept going on and on and on about your event, but everybody, if you are on the fence or you're even thinking about going out there, you should. Go to Glendale, Arizona this weekend. It's definitely going to be worth it. And, you know, if you got a first place beard, you can come home with one of the most amazing trophies I've ever seen. And I'm not saying that. It, that Those are badass. So, yeah. Yes. And I want, I also want to thank Honest Amish as well for being our title sponsor. Thank you so much for stepping up. Super glad we could help out any way possible. So, looking forward to this event. You, uh, you're, you've already done a great job and it hasn't even happened yet. So I very much look forward to it. And, you know, if there's anything else we can do in the next two or three days, let us know and, and we'll make okay. it happen. All right. We'll see you later. All right, Emily. Best thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Welcome. And you can find out more information about this event. We'll put a list of all the links to everything you're going to need to know about this event in the show notes and down below. Make sure you subscribe to you know, follow all these really great competitions that are going on across the country. So thank you, Emily, and we wish you the best of luck this weekend.
Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, we got five minutes left. You, what do you want to get into here? Well, we can either. Well, let's you talk do about the newsletter real quick. Yeah, we'll do the newsletter. Um, let me get that pulled up. <clears throat> yeah. So everybody knows that Beer Team USA puts out these newsletters, and uh, yeah, so the newest newsletter came out, and we're going to kind of review it and talk about it a little bit real quick. But you know, uh. Yeah, so you know we can we can just do this real quick. If you are looking for any beard products, and you know it's getting getting that time of the year, and you know people may be swimming and whatnot, like yeah, was talking about that, and uh, that's how this all got brought up because I said to Aaron, I said this is something you really got to make sure that we we let people know about because you know guys getting in the pool and getting chlorine in their beard making sure that they're protecting their beard properly and taking care of it and maintaining it, especially in the harsh conditions of the summer. That's right. So you can just go over to honestamish.com and you can use promo code talking beards. You can save 15% off your order. And if you somehow, you know, get over $35 in your cart, you'll get free shipping. So, I mean, that's pretty freaking good. So go over to honestamish.com, use promo code talking beards, and you will save 15% off your order. Yeah, so everyone, uh, there is a thing for this too, but yeah, uh, Beard Team USA just put out their uh, uh, latest. They they've been a uh, um kind of uh, been in hiatus, slacking. We'll, we'll, we'll use the term slacking. COVID, you know, <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah, as you can see on the bottom of the screen, there it says sign up for the Beard Team USA newsletter, which is what this is by going to uh, beardteamusa.org org slash subscribe and uh basically we had some information in here this month uh there's our good buddy who uh watch look at that beard he looks like a, a beard boss guy he's a james former McMahon. Beard boss guy freaking james mcmahon Looks yeah, so so, so as as it says, from a brief hiatus from mm-hmm. severe COVID scares and other adulting adventures, the uh, Beard Team USA uh, newsletter is back. Um, they're talking about he, they had the Nationals plan for Casper, Wyoming, at the Ford Wyoming Center, taking place at the, alongside with the Booze and Bacon Festival. <clears throat> um, if you want more information about it, make sure you subscribe to the newsletter. Uh, beard team, or you can go for more information to beardteamusa.org. And I'm also working on something super cool for national, so that we'll uh, we'll talk about that in the next few months. But is it we, trying to get me there? No, I, oh. I think that's pretty much a lost cause, probably. Okay, <laughs> speaking of events, Aaron, why don't you what is what is this about? Well, it says our good friends from Aiken, South Carolina and Talking Beards have put together a very simple facial hair events calendar. And it's just called the Beard Calendar. And that's that's what we called it. And it's super easy to get to everything else. You know, Talking Beards, that's us. So, yeah, um, we put together a beard calendar. It's called the And you can go there. I've got everything set up by a month. It's uh, super easy to use. I just. I just put every all the information I can find. I put it yeah. in there. Some and, events like the bearded villain stuff, they don't put on Facebook. There's not event pages. So if there's an event page, it's linked and you can just click it and go to it. And always remember too, if you go to uh, the beardcalendar.com, there's a little pop up that'll pop up down there. What you want to do is click on it. And if you have an event that's going on, all you got to do is give, just type in the information about it and it'll get up there up onto the uh, calendar. So everyone can know about it. Or the most, uh, the most things, I don't even know the right wording. The thing that I get the most is, uh, I spell things wrong. So if you find some more errors in there, you could just tell me and I'll fix them because <laughs> I'm pretty good at making spell errors, but I, I also paste and copied a bunch and I had some, a bunch of events yeah. for 2020 and that those, that's not, that happened years things. ago, dude. Yeah, well, I changed it to 2022, so now we're good to go. Good to go. And the last thing on the uh, newsletter from Beard Team USA, which is a big, big, big news about what's going to be happening. Oh, my gosh. Probably the biggest news ever. Probably the biggest news ever. Don't, don't. Oh, look at him. He's like, I can see you. Peekaboo. Peekaboo. 
What is it? All oh, the 2023 World Beard and Mustache Championship. It's announced. What's the details? Yeah, so we got a little bit of details about it uh, after the unfortunate cancellation of the 2023 WBMC in New Zealand due to COVID restrictions. We voted, and yeah, we're going to Germany. So here we go. We got this little thing. Bingo, bingo. There's a WBMA announcement. We threw some little cool things on there. But yeah, it's uh, it's going to be in Germany, and you know, I'm not reading reading all that because it's in German. But it's uh, in late spring at the City Hall. In that town, Bergeson, Berghausen, Berghausen. You guys sound angry or Berghausen. German, but yeah. So we're going to Germany in 2023. So that's going to be super fun, and uh, everybody start you know saving now because you know it's Germany and you got to fly there. Or, Germany and you got to eat all the beers. Yeah, eat Wiener Schnitzel. Mm, schnitzels, yeah, but, yeah. So. But yeah, so if you guys are interested in finding out more about what's going on with uh, what's going on in the beard world, uh, beardteamusa.org, you can go and sign up for that newsletter once a month. They'll send you a really cool newsletter with more information. And as all these major events are going to be happening throughout the rest of the year, you're going to want to stay informed. And if you don't do that, you can always follow us on talkingbeards.com. There you can stay way and in, more informed with all the things that are going on every week all around the country. There's so many different events going on. We said, if you go to the beard calendar.com, you're going to find out about all the events that are going on and a little coincide with a lot of things that are going on with the, this show. So if you want to keep up to date with the latest news of what's going on in the bearding community, make sure you go over and, and follow talking beards on all social media uh, follow the podcast. You can subscribe wherever you subscribe to podcasts and make sure that you sub- well, subscribe to us on YouTube because there's going to be lots of cool stuff. There'll be a video up by the end of the week, new podcast up by the end of the week. And uh, that's it. That's it. That's all you're getting from us tonight. But we want to thank yeah. everyone. Uh, I'm Scott Sikora. You can find me at Scott Sikora on all social media. Thank you guys for all tuning in. Thank you, Emily, for coming on the show tonight. And Aaron. Yeah, I'm Aaron D. Johnston. Thank you, everybody, like Scott said, for tuning in and watching us and Emily and everybody that's involved that, that creates this little show that we love doing every week. So you can find me at uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, at Aaron D. Johnston. I'm at Talking Beards on TikTok. And, of course, you know, all Honest Amish stuff. You can go find that. You know, we hit Instagram, Twitter, Facebook and uh, TikTok as well at Honest Amish and uh, honestamish.com. Save 15% talk of beards. So everybody have a great evening. And if you're going to be in Arizona this weekend, I'll see you there. So everybody have a great night. Okay. Bye. So long, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Farewell. Thanks for tuning in to Talking Beards. Make sure you go over to honestamish.com and use promo code TALKINGBEARDS to get 15% off your order. Don't forget to tune in live next Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern at TALKINGBEARDS.com.